let's say that you want to improve your performance in a given type of exercise. Let's talk about some of the things that seem to work across the board to improve strength, improve hypertrophy, and improve nerve to muscle communication and performance. The first thing that's absolutely key for nerve to muscle communication and physical performance of any kind might not sound that exciting to you, but it is very exciting, and that's salt. Nerves, nerve cells, neurons, communicate with each other and communicate with muscle by electricity. But that electricity is generated by particular ions moving into and out of the neuron. And the rushing in of a particular ion, sodium, salt, is what allows nerve cells to fire. If you don't have enough salt in your system, your neurons and your brain and your nerve to muscle communication will be terrible. If you have sufficient salt, it will be excellent. How much salt will depend on how much water you're drinking, how much caffeine you're drinking, and how much food you're ingesting, and whether or not you're taking any diuretics, how hot it is, et cetera, how much you're sweating. So you want to make sure that you have enough salt, potassium, and magnesium in your system if you want to perform well. I realize that salt isn't a very glamorous uh, performance tool, but it is vital. It is absolutely vital. And the endurance athletes and the people that train in high heat can uh, speak to the fact that when you're electrolytes are low, your brain doesn't function, your body doesn't function nearly as well. In fact, even for mental work, for studying and for writing and doing analytic work of any kind, even a hard conversation that's important to you, having sufficient electrolytes is really going to help and being low on electrolytes won't help. And just drinking water won't help because you need electrolytes. So a lot of people will feel better if they'll drink water with some electrolytes. Low sugar electrolyte solutions are now very easy to find out there. So that will make a big difference in terms of reducing hangovers and improving sleep. You want appropriate amounts of sodium, potassium, and magnesium in your system. Salt has gotten kind of a bad rap, but there was an article published in Science Magazine, which is one of the premier three apex journals in science, on scientific publishing, about the, the whole myth around salt. I mean, it's true that people with chronic hypertension need to avoid salt salt. But for most people who are consuming enough fluid, salt is great. I mean, salt is something that brings volume, keeps your blood volume up, keeps your brain feeling alert and focused. A lot of times people will feel jittery during the day. They'll think that I have low blood sugar. Take a pinch of salt, put in some water, maybe a little lemon juice to kill the taste and drink that. You notice you're just rock solid. Why? You might've been low blood pressure or low sodium. Sometimes people can't focus and they are low sodium. Sometimes we crave sugar and we're actually low sodium. This isn't wishy-washy, new agey California stuff. This is really like, this is goes right down to how our kidneys function and blood volume and how the brain requires a certain amount of blood pressure in order to have enough blood going to our brain in order to be able to focus. There are tools that one can use to reduce inflammation at a kind of foundational level away from training. And these are tools, the kind of golden three, according to Andy Galpin, and the ones that he recommends are sufficient omega-3s. Again, that can be accomplished through diet, through whole food intake, or through supplementation or both. So in general, getting above a thousand milligrams of EPA per day to keep inflammation uh, low or relatively low. Vitamin D, and in some cases, magnesium malate. Magnesium malate seems to be particularly effective in offsetting delayed onset muscle soreness. Soreness itself is not required for improvements in strength, improvements in explosiveness, improvements in hypertrophy. That's a myth. Now, if you do experience delayed onset muscle soreness, chances are you stressed that particular muscle pretty well, or even maybe too well. Maybe you stressed it too much and you need longer recovery. There's a total debate out there about whether or not you should train again when a muscle is still sore. I think the general takeaway is no, that means it's not recovered. And there are things, of course, like like massage, like fascial release and things of that sort, sauna, cold that can perhaps accelerate uh, the movement from soreness to not sore. But in general, the omega-3, vitamin D and magnesium malate trio seem to be an effective way to reduce inflammation at kind of a systemic level. But remember, you want inflammation provided you're not damaging the muscle so much that you're injured during the training session because that's the stimulus for change in those muscles. The thing that's been shown over and over again, numerous well-controlled studies to improve muscle performance is creatine. Early on, there was a lot of controversy about creatine, but there are many studies. If you want, you can go to this website that everyone now knows I love, which is this free website, examine.com. Uh, so 18 studies supporting that muscle creatine content can be increased by ingesting creatine. How much creatine? Well, I asked the experts and they tell me that for somebody who's about 180 pounds, five grams a day should be sufficient or so heavier than 180. So if you get like, if you're a 220 pound or 230 pound person, 10 to 15 grams of creatine, people lighter than 180 pounds, maybe three to five grams of creatine or even one to th three grams. Creatine is a fuel source 
at for early early in bouts of activity for high intensity activity it is also a fuel source for neurons in the brain and it can have some cognitive enhancing effects so creatine is a very interesting molecule early on when it was released as a supplement it was thought that you had to load it in higher dosages for a few days and then maintain it lower dosages so you take you know 20 or 30 grams a day then back off to 5 or 10 it doesn't seem to be the case that you can get all the benefits from taking the dosages at the low level. I just mentioned a few moments ago uh, as they relate to body weight throughout. So salt and electrolytes, absolutely key. You need those present. You need to be well hydrated. Creatine seems to have a performance enhancing effect. There are 66 studies, 66, showing that power output is greatly increased anywhere from 12 to 20%. And this is sprinting and running and jumping as well as weightlifting by creatine. The ability to hydrate your body is improved by creatine because of the way that it brings more uh, water into cells of various kinds. As an indirect effect, it can help in increase lean mass because of the way that it brings more water into muscle and probably also because of the way that if you get stronger, you can generate more force and generate more hypertrophy. It reduces fatigue. Seven studies have shown that it reduces fatigue. Um, there are even some interesting effects on improving cognition after traumatic brain injury, although that's a serious medical condition and situation, so you absolutely should talk to a board-certified physician before adding anything ex or taking anything out of your current regimen. There are a few other effects that are interesting and notable, but the big ones are the ones that I referred to before about increased power output, etc. I just want to emphasize that creatine can increase this hormone that we talked about in the testosterone episode, dihydrotestosterone, which is testosterone converted by 5-alpha reductase into dihydrotestosterone. It's the more dominant androgen in humans, leads to increases in strength and libido and so forth. It also can increase male pattern baldness. Some people, not everybody, experience some hair loss with creatine. Other people don't. Some people experience accelerated beard growth because basically DHC has the opposite effect on hair follicles on the face as it does on the scalp. Some people don't. Women who ingest creatine. There are essentially no data showing that it, it increases hair loss or facial hair growth, but of course, everyone is different. So you can go to examine.com. You can explore those studies. So creatine, definitely a powerful performance enhancing molecule. 